All right, hey everybody, and welcome to uh, Artist Collabo Drawing Jam, and this one is gonna be epic. Oh my goodness, holy cow! Uh, forgot to play the trailer for the event. Here we go. <laughs>
work as a freelance animator, um, and I've also worked as um, a background artist for some outsourced shows here in the Philippines, like um, DuckTales, um, Transformers, Cyberverse, and stuff like that, and other shows like that. Um, yeah, um, currently I'm working on um, like a, a short that we're pitching to uh, the Southeast Asian market right now. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 a really hard journey trying to uh, pioneer original content in the Philippines, but uh, trying my best. <laughs> awesome, and uh, so it, you know, I had a late night last night. Let me just say that first, and um, <laughs> I just. Right the sound was not on earlier. Carla was the only one that introduced herself. I'm so sorry. I'm going to do a quick intro to everybody now. Um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's all right. This is definitely okay. live. This is definitely live. You know what I mean? So my apologies. I'm going to go down the list here. Carla from the Philippines. Amazing. Rafa, uh, uh, Rafael from Brazil incredible yes. illustrator did a beautiful illustration for procreate uh, last year that was like their illustration last year that was amazing thank you charlotte belland so she is an incredible educator animal drawer uh wish there were more teachers like this wonderful human right here she brought the white wolf uh last year journey the white wolf and unfortunately, Journey had a bit of an accident uh, this year, but he's doing okay. He's in a cast. His leg's in a cast. But we would love for you to send some well wishes to uh, Journey, um, and we'll make sure that he gets them. Or uh, is it she? He? I a he. A he. Okay. Uh, yes. Like I said, it's kind of early. So um, <laughs> next one is Daniel Ariega. Hello. Annie Winner. A character design uh, art director for Coco, um, and uh, worked on a slew of other films, um, mostly Pixar films, and currently at uh, Cuckoo Studios. And Tristan, come to us from the Philippines. Uh, again, in incredible artist in the animation industry. Um, you said character design, was it? Yep. Mostly? Excellent. And yeah. Marialis, traditional artist, uh, does a lot yeah. of illustrations, uh, children's books, uh, extraordinary. Anything I missed? <laughs> Lives in Scotland. Um, yeah, I'm based in Scotland. Uh, uh, yeah, I write stories too. It's, quite, it's something I'm really enjoying right now. And uh, I'm also working on a book illustration class for Scholism. Yay. Yay! And it's going to be incredible. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been watching them. I get the sneak peek. Uh, Masei Seki, uh, character designer extraordinaire. She's been with Imaginism Studios for a good solid minute. She has also worked on uh, Christmas Chronicles with Clay Cadis designing all the elves in that film. Um, fun little note is uh, she had three balloons in the Macy's Day uh, Thanksgiving Day Parade that we got to go check out and that was pretty epic. Uh, Jim Bryson, we go all the way back to college, my friend. Um, Hi. We also created uh, Nico and the Sword of Light together. So Emmy winner, uh, e Emmy nominee this year and Annie nominee uh, in the past. Incredible artist, awesome human. Victor Kalvachev, another awesome human, coming to us from Paris. He is uh, a beast, a beast with uh, drawing. I was going to say heavyweight because <laughs> that's what I said last time. And you're like, uh, not heavy at all. Uh, strapping, <laughs> healthy looking man. Uh, loves to draw characters and all sorts of other illustrations. Does uh, a Beautiful, amazing, very popular class on schoolism called Deconstructed with Victor Kalvachev. And Zishu? Yeah, Z. Zishu. Okay, awesome. Z, can you uh, introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, sure. Hey, guys. Um, Hello. So my name is Z. Uh, I'm from New Jersey, so it's like 9 a.m., I think, right now. Um, but yeah, I work primarily in movie posters for entertainment. 
Um, but I also do some concept art on the side, especially for video games and also commercials for film. Awesome. Well, welcome. Welcome, Z. And uh, Danielle, Danielle and I, we go back a little bit as well, huh? Yeah. Maybe you could introduce yourself too, Danielle. Sure. Um, I'm from Brazil as well as Rafael. <laughs> and okay. I am an independent uh, artist and illustrator. Um, I do work on children's books for uh, different uh, clients. Uh, I worked on a cool children's book that is all about women in science, which is pretty cool. And we're about to start a new uh, a new set of books because it's like I think it's gonna be like two uh, series. Um, yeah, and I kind of do my own stuff. <laughs> it's fantastic freedom. That's what yeah. that's what you're talking about. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and we just had a new person just join in. Uh, Jason Seiler, Jason. Welcome. Jason is a illustrator, a character. Oh, well, why don't you say the whole thing? Because you do a lot of stuff, including stand up, by the way. Yeah. Um, well, Jason just woke up. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, and I, I totally, I was, yeah, long story. But, anyways, um, yeah, I do, um, I do stand up, or I did until all this uh, pandy stuff started happening. Um, and um, yeah, illustration, um, do a lot of stuff for publication, um, I've done a few things for like movie posters and things like that. Um, any, basically, any, anyone that wants to pay me to draw stuff, that's what I do. Um, I teach for Schoolism, which is a lot of fun. I've been doing that for, for quite a while, uh, two classes. And I also host an art podcast every week. I talk with awesome artists. Um, and I'm a dad. I've got a lot of kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh. welcome um, welcome jason uh jason has also done some of the best uh you know rolling stone illustrations time magazine illustrations he's all over the place uh welcome and so jason i'm gonna be typing into the chat okay. the link for the board that we're we're currently drawing on so the idea here is you draw on chess pieces. Okay. All right, and at the same time, all okay. of the people yeah. in Zoom, okay, anybody in YouTube, there is a link to Zoom in the description of the uh, of the video there. And so you can join us on Zoom if you like and ask a question, okay? So audience in Zoom, does anybody have a question that they'd like to ask? You can raise your hand and I will uh, press the magic button to allow you to talk. All right, here we go. Felipe, what's your question? Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, it's a little soft. Yeah, can you hear me better right now? I can hear you better, yeah. <laughs> So my question is, uh, so um, I worked with uh, motion design and 3D for a lot of years. And uh, so I started to kind of draw more uh, like two years back. So I do more traditional drawing. And uh, I've, I've been trying to get more into digital drawing also, as because, it's, uh, because I also work as a creative, so I can do some drawing also. But I haven't seen, I've been having some difficulties. like doing a transition from traditional to, to digital. Do you have like some tips that you can give me? Like, um, because like I feel like I get lost like in brushes and I feel like I, I have my pencil and with my pencil or charcoal, I can do a lot of stuff and then I go to digital and it, it doesn't work the same way. I know it's digital from traditional, but you have some tips on it. Thank you. Absolutely. And so going from traditional to digital, yeah. Uh, that learning curve can be kind of tough. Anybody have yeah. any good suggestions? Schoolism. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> yeah, man, life sucks. Uh, I'm, I'm just thinking about it. <laughs> um, yeah. Going from traditional to digital. Yeah, what I'm thinking about is like doing just like uh, I, I took, I got a lot of brushes, but on what I'm doing now, I just take, took all of the brushes out. And now I'm just trying to like put like just the usual brushes from Photoshop. And I'm just trying to use those and trying to see where I can get from that. I, I, I think you're on the right track. Like a hundred brushes just to grow for the simplest ones and go like three or one. For example, yesterday I was seeing the Nathan Fox uh, presentation with the drawing and the painting, and he was using like some kind of a, a brush that looks for me very traditional because I like the painterly look, not too much digital. And yeah, really I cool. I think uh, Felipe, I think the main thing here, <clears throat> you kind of nailed it. You know, start off simple. I actually I, have an advice for you. All right. Uh, on that on that matter. Um, I think brushes are going to be a lot of fun for you to discover, and it's certainly a great point to start and get excited about what you're going to do. But the biggest trap you're going to fall into as a traditional artist is the zoom. The fact that you can zoom in and get lost in details that normally you're not going to be able to do and address in a traditional medium. Oh, so yeah. this is a trap you're going to really hit your face hard in the, uh, and uh, suddenly nothing's going to work because when you step back, You'd be like, holy shit, I got so much detail here and not, not a lot of here, so what should I do? Get rid of all this awesome drawing that I just did, but it's too small, uh, or add more there. It might become really frustrating. So for me, that would be the number one thing to, to, uh, to really uh, look out for. So just okay. constantly step back. In other words, zoom out uh, or work with, uh, with a little thing and just constantly keep that in mind because that would make you nuts. Um, if this is for print, uh, then constantly print your piece, uh, like just uh, at a hundred percent of what is going to be printed, so you have a you know just immediate validation if the size is right, if you're on the right track, if you're overdoing some details, and if you're balancing it right. That was it. Wonderful. That was great. Yeah, I'd also say that being that you're a traditional artist first, you're going to have a lot of. Um, more advantages, I think, as far as understanding cer certain aesthetics when it comes to painting and, and that sort of a thing. Because, I mean, I, I think that um, the more you paint traditionally, the more when you work digitally, you're going to be able to. It, I always say it, say it like this: it's it's like the Matrix. Um, when when uh, she wants to know how to fly a helicopter, they just plug it in, and all of a sudden she can fly a helicopter. Um, I feel like the more you paint um, digitally, the better your traditional paintings start becoming and it works both ways because when you paint digitally you get to um, uh, I guess learn and experiment some things a little bit faster um, because you're working you're able to work so much quicker uh, and then when you go I mean this works for me anyways I don't know if anyone else does this but um, yeah. I've, I've noticed that when I you know I do like a few hundred digital portraits or something next time I do an oil I'm like whoa man I'm doing some cooler things here and then i noticed some I awesome agree things with you, jason yeah some things happen when i start working in oil where i i, I kind of record th that memory in my mind of you know certain things that brushwork is doing or or so on and then when i go to work digitally i try to put that into my digital work so it, it, it's it's really i think an advantage to be doing both of them yeah i think too and uh, nathan yesterday uh nathan fox also gave me a, a good tip like do 20 minutes of digital drawing every day like just get in touch with because i've worked with photoshop for a lot of years but it's mostly for motion design or 3d and uh nathan fox was yeah, uh, at the end of the presentation said like yeah do 20 minutes do 20 minutes a day like getting getting uh, comfortable with the medium which is very important to do wonderful thank you so much felipe uh why don't we go to the next caller <laughs> this is Carlos. Carlos, hello. Can you hear me? Three, two, one. All right. Carlos. <laughs> All right. Carlos. Hello. Hello. Carlos okay, can kind of, kind of hear you. Speak right into the microphone. Uh, uh, yes, yeah. can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. a little better. Uh, yeah, 
Well, my question is, how do you guys put this checkerboard and the canvas? How do you what? The checkerboard. How do you put the checkerboard and the canvas? Oh, oh, that's just so uh, copy somebody else's checkerboard, paste into canvas, control V. All right. Awesome. That was a quick one. Why don't we go on to the next the one? Don't call you. What's that? I hope the lawyers don't call you for rights. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, theoretically. <laughs> uh, go prove Excuse it. Me. Hello, hello. <laughs> Who's this? Where are you from? Concerned oh. about the checkerboard. That's... Can you hear me? <laughs> Hi, yes. Okay, um, I'm Nigerian. I've been uh, painting for a while now, and um, I mean, as a hobby, and I would like to go professional, but I not really sure where to go with the art now like i can't afford art school right now and um yeah i use some online resources i use schoolism you know, skillshare but i just feel like it's something that's just missing yeah um any any tips everybody anybody want to address this yeah what kind of uh what kind of illustration type stuff do you want to do um, more on the concept design side. Concept design, mostly, yeah. Well, well okay, someone else. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I don't want to interrupt. I was going to just say, like, um, first, how kind of clear is your goal? Like, what kind of project do you want to work on? I really like, like to target my goals really really yeah, specifically yeah. so um, that would be the first thing to really think about that don't think about it like oh yeah it doesn't matter I, i'll do games i'll do whatever like just have a target so that you you can aim for that target much easier and the other thing is like try to find really good um resources where you can find paintings as well as their sketches before the painting you know and Mm -hmm. or videos right which is even easier because a lot of times their candy coating finish really hides a lot of um how they got there mm -hmm. anybody else all there right are so many answers for this question that i'm, I'm <laughs> <sighs> I, I, I don't know i'm trying to think about something more specific but but i think you just said basically oh everything <laughs> all right well why don't we go on to the next question here this one's from elizabeth hello elizabeth hello where are you where are you hello. calling from i'm from argentina awesome oh, my neighbor don't, don't cry for me <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if we go there, goodness gracious. <laughs> Anyhow, I have more of like a general question for everybody because I'm always interested in the artist's journey. Uh, so what is the, what you would call the worst piece of work that you've ever worked on? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that is the, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I once uh, took an illustration job like off of Craigslist, and it was, oh. it was like some dude, and and it just it was a disaster. <laughs> that was my worst. <sighs> one. And, um, I had so many. Yeah, I, I had uh, so one, so many. One time. Um, I was very excited because I was offered this job for this advertisement company and I was so excited because they were paying like a ridiculous amount of money and I really needed it and I was really like excited about the whole thing. And as we started working on it, I started realizing or, or thinking that what the client actually wants is a, a photo manipulation, not, not a painting. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I had been ta going back and forth with my agent and saying, I think what these people want is a photo manipulated image and because it was like a 
had to do with uh, with a tiger and all this kind of like stuff like drawing a tiger like super super photorealistic um it's, it's kind of a complicated image but anyways um they're all like oh no 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 we love your work we love your work and and i i just i kept doing it and i kept working on it and i was doing a great job and i was very happy with it but the clients kept saying weird comments the whole time like you know can this look this needs to look it doesn't look as real as it should be and i'm thinking this is this like it looks pretty darn real and I'm doing everything I can. And they, they just got making comments like it's got too many brushwork strokes and stuff like that. And I'm like, come on. So um, I, I kept telling my agent like this is they're not I don't think they're happy with it. And and then they, they kept telling me, oh, keep going, keep going and everything. It's you're doing well. It's just it was just a really bad experience. And then finally, right towards the end, I'm like, I finally finished and, and it turned out really great. I was super happy with it. Uh, and then they canned me um, right at the end because they said um, that, yeah, it, 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 we, we really just need something that's more like photo manipulated. The, after all this, this was like two weeks of nonstop. Um, and, and then I, all I got was a kill fee for it. Um, and this was this is kind of a funny learning experience for me too because I was so mad. I don't ever do this. I was so mad that I wrote my agent this this email, um, just you know, a lot of explicits in there, okay. Um, <laughs> and I was because I was I knew this whole time that this was what was going on, um, but I accidentally sent it to the client as well. Oh, <laughs> it deserved it. Oh, yeah, wow. so. maybe subconsciously you you did it on purpose. <laughs> Who yeah. so it was a very bad it was not a good experience and my agent called me he's like what did you do <laughs> I like what? The truth. That's what I did I did justice yeah <laughs> I also want to welcome uh Genevieve Genevieve hi. you just appeared. Hello. Yeah. hello hi 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 is there a link to the actual magma studio yes i i texted you in the oh, chat okay oh, sorry i'm a little bit uh, yeah i also had a similar situation where long story short i fired the client uh because uh, they <laughs> they hired me to do a cover because they love my stuff and then sent me a sketch which is absolutely dreadful and annoying and, and terrible uh, in <laughs> terms of not communicating the story had nothing to do with the story. It's going to look weird no matter how you draw it. Uh, it was supposed to be uh, someone that looks very much like Evergreen, uh, seen from below, um, almost at the head of the Doberman who she's, uh, you know, having on a leash. And uh, I suggested another cover. They said, "No, we really want that sketch." I started doing the sketch, and things got really weird when they started sending me Amazon references for what the muzzle should look like exactly. Um, and uh, then they told me that it looks too much like Evergreen. And I said, well, how many percent, uh, percentage, what percentage of Evergreen would you like to see? Um, and we agreed on 70% Evergreen. Then I went specifically, should, should I take, you know, 70% off of Evergreen on all parts or you would like to keep like 90% of the lips, perhaps, you know, 95% of the eyebrows, but really cut back on the nose um, and uh, in the end, I couldn't take it anymore when they said that the left eye of the Doberman does not seem right, and and and, and I fired them. I'm, I'm starting to sweat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and Genevieve, uh, we did some intros earlier. Do you want to give a little intro? Oh, sure. What you um, do? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm a supervising character designer on. Um, the Animaniacs reboot at Warner Brothers, um, and so I, uh, and I'm also kind of like, um, I kind of like manage the layout team as well, like, um, like when the animation comes back, and then I, uh, I check the animation and just do notes and drawers over the animation to make sure the models on, on, uh, you know, to the show style, and, um, and then just like the, set the style for the the show as well um for just the characters um yeah and i guess that's fun <laughs> yeah, that was great that was great <laughs> yeah i loved animaniacs as a kid i don't know about you like oh, you... i was wondering if that's what oh, she yeah. said yeah <laughs> 
Yeah, I, when I was a kid, I, I loved that show, and I, um, I still always... remember the theme song. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's super catchy. <laughs> You're uh, an Armenian. <laughs> yeah. I love we're it. We're tiny. We're toony. We're all a little. <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, love it. Awesome. Wow. All right, and also we're taking in questions from the Q and A in case people don't want to jump on the mic. How you get on the microphone for attendees, anyways, is I will ask you to raise your hand. I'm going to lower everybody's hands currently, and when we go to the next question uh, for passing the mic, I'll I'll ask you to raise your hands. Okay, so um, anonymous asks uh, you know, why. Why chess? I saw some people doing this <laughs> yeah. uh, this board. Why not? Right, and I started drawing a little chess piece on their board uh, just in the middle of the night. I didn't even, I didn't hook up to their sound or anything. I just started drawing a thing, and then it was so much fun because you see like people just slowly stop drawing and they realize, and then they hover around your drawing, your the little <laughs> cursor. It was great. <laughs> Is it, isn't that a little creepy? I'm like, I can hover over a sailor right now. Is it, yeah. How, how Distracting. <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, what's really funny. That was happening to me the other day and I was getting so annoyed. Uh, oh. <laughs> if you, if you are the administrator, you can go up to file drawing settings and then you could turn off all of the you see oh. now nobody sees anything but uh, yeah. okay. oh, interesting. i wish i would have known that yeah know that. there was there was someone that was like sort of hijacking it and uh just, just trying to be a party pooper oh. and I, I was like getting so annoyed oh, it must be pretty annoying yeah <laughs> I, I wasn't saying anything about it i was just like oh my gosh okay ah. <laughs> <laughs> all right like, whatever so why don't we go to the next question here <clears throat> in the chat. So the next question is, um, Sid, hi, Bobby. Thank you, all the, the team of Lightbox, for such a special event. Awesome. Love that question. Um, <laughs> making it accessible <laughs> is greater than previous years. Question, this software, Magma, will it be available to use after the event? Yes, and for all time to come, as far as we're concerned, will it yes. be? Uh, will it cost money? Um, not this. Not this. This is going to remain free for everybody. What we plan on doing is creating add-ons. You know, cheap little add-ons um, in the future that people can purchase. But the whole entire idea here is um, to bring together the art community. You know, globally. Let's draw together right this all right beautiful next question here is um from sarah sarah says hi i'm an inspiring artist from the philippines i'd like to ask how the artists who weren't based in animation powerhouses like europe or or the u.s before uh, starting their career their animation career how do they break into the industry Okay, so if you don't live in Europe, you don't live in the U.S., how did you break into the industry? Do you have any tips? Oh, I guess this is a question for me and Carla. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, me? All right. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, uh, for me, I uh, actually uh, I managed to get a recent gig on with Disney TVA on the Owl House. So... Um, I, uh, at least for, for, um, for those in the Philippines, uh, I think it's more, it's, it was very important for me to, you know, make connections online, especially on Instagram. Uh, I met a lot of, uh, artists cause there are a lot of uh, art directors over at Instagram and then they, <laughs> they stalk a lot. So I, I initially, go, I used to do like a lot of fan art too. So I don't know. I, I like to attribute that doing fan art um, helped me uh, get some work uh, in, uh, in the foreign industry, like not in the Philippines. And yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's a great answer. Fan art, 
tends to attract people I'd, that I'd might not totally know valid. you, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I I don't know why people. I see some people uh, online uh, trashing on people who do fan art, but honestly, I feel like a lot of opportunities lie when you do that, especially when the fan art looks cool too. So, it, it, uh, Bobby, isn't that what happened to to Cheeks, Galloway? Cheeks, um, oh, really? Yeah, I think he started doing. Wait, like he was doing like Spider Man and Batman and Superman, like. These, yeah, um, these oh, like like his okay, own style, yeah, yeah. and uh, from what I remember, I mean, I talked with him a, like a long time ago about this, but um, he was approached by one of the companies like, "Hey, man, those are our characters, and oh. what are you doing?" And then they said, <laughs> and then someone hired him because he was like better than they were. That's basically. Yeah, I do know that Ryan Lang. He did a uh, fan art of the of Iron Man and some other villain, or like a oh, yeah. villain, and they were fighting each other. And next thing you know, he's working on like Doctor Strange. He's working on Avengers. He's working on all sorts of stuff. Of course, um, he's extremely good. So you you need to have that. <laughs> yeah, it it helps. doesn't happen to everybody. I it think it, it totally helps. Yeah. <laughs> Totally. Is helpful, I, I would love to give a couple little like um, social media kind of tips since I also I live in Canada. Uh, it's there's a lot of stuff going going on here, but I, I generally don't work for any companies in Canada. So uh, social media has always been a very important uh, thing for me. Uh, one thing that I try to go towards things that nobody really talks about, but one thing that I look at is um, what color is the platform? So like Twitter is blue. If I have three images to yeah. post, one is orange, I'm gonna post the orange one on Twitter, right? Because you'll notice it in your feed more. Oh. <laughs> right, same sure. thing with Facebook. Oh. <laughs> uh, start commenting on a bunch of people's stuff right after or just before you post it's not like hey check out my new post but try to do something genuine and that goes in their feed and then they're more more likely to answer and then create engagement and the algorithms of all those platforms they look at how much engagement because as you know when we follow people which is super annoying we don't get their feed a lot of times right you yeah. get yeah. like everything else or whatever. You just get certain stuff. So you need to create engagement so the algorithms will um, feel like, okay, yeah, yeah, you want to see this, <laughs> right? And one thing that people, a lot of people don't know is that well, within the last like year and a half of uh, Instagram, they made it so you can't put as much of a description down. You guys notice that? Like it goes to dot, dot, dot more, like a lot yes. quicker. Yes. Yeah. Well, you can use yeah. that to your advantage because if somebody clicks on more, that also counts as engagement. Instagram mm. figures oh. that you're interested in that. So you can set whatever text you have to, you might notice in some of my posts, it'll be like, yeah, so today I walked the dog and then I found the secrets to the universe. And it's just one thing, it's <laughs> dot, dot, dot more. <laughs> You know, and then people have to click on this it. Sounds like <laughs> and this can create engagement, you know? I think that was our friends. Anybody walking. else want to add anything that they found interesting? Well, here's another one then. Um, Twitter, or I don't know if it's only Twitter, but I definitely noticed that um, if you don't have a link, in your post, then a lot of these social media platforms will actually uh, have your stuff more visible because you don't have a link. If you have a link, then they want you to promote it. <laughs> right? So then they don't oh. show it as much. So there you go. Okay, why well, don't we go on to another question then? Uh, this question is coming from San Fran or Sarah, Sarah Francisco 
asks, uh, hi, I'm an aspiring artist from, oh, did, did that, sorry. Um, Daniel Ariega, this one is for you, buddy. What's something oh. you didn't expect you would have to do as a character art director? An unexpected responsibility. Um, that's a good one, yeah. Actually, uh, unexpected. I don't know if it was a responsibility, but it was more like I didn't realize I wasn't going to draw anymore. <laughs> it was it was it was more about uh, it became more about managing than anything. Um, there was still a little bit of drawing, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of uh, art directing. But uh, it was just more about like, you know, managing personality, managing the art schedule and uh, and uh, just getting the work all done together. It was just uh, it was something I didn't expect from when I was younger, absolutely. Uh, but uh, I say that that's probably the, the biggest thing. Uh, it's just that the, the higher I felt like the higher you get, you know, in, in a position, it's just like the less drawing you do in a studio, at least. I don't know if you guys can agree with that, but it's kind of been my experience. I do. Yeah. I almost sense uh, a little stress, like thinking about <laughs> that question, Danny. Yeah. Was it a stressful experience? It must have been like, y you know, even though it's a great film and everything, great team. Uh, just yeah. the responsibilities yeah absolutely and then you know you, you you're so you're so like passionate about it you know and so uh uh let's say let's say a direction starts going in a way you probably don't agree with it start it starts to get to you you know and you you, you try not to take that with you but it, it's hard not to you know um because you care so much well and, the uh, film that you were on coco which you know talks about uh it's a mexican uh story or you know, talks about the culture and everything that's going to connect with you so much more. You f must have felt more responsibility. I mean, I, 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 there was a huge immense pressure on that, you know, like uh, it was it's like all I heard about when we were making it was how, you know, you're just ripping our culture off and, uh, and you're just yeah. trying to make money, trying to make money off of us. And uh, and there's no way Disney can do the Mexican culture. Right. They're just going to whitewash it. You know, I've just heard I heard everything, you know, and it was just like. It, it just got it got to the point where it's like oh my god we got to do this right and uh and and pixar did you know they they really did their research they sent us to mexico to go in and, and learn the culture and, and i mean i'm mexican but i was born in the united states so i i needed to really learn 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 the culture too and uh and so that kind of that kind of thing just really immerses you in the world and i mean we all really care whether we were Mexican or not we everyone on that film just tried their best and as they always do and, and most of those films you know and as all the films I guess and uh uh but on, on that in that situation because it was so culturally sensitive it was really important to get it right awesome so why don't we go to another um voice voice question anybody have a question okay here we go Angela, okay, unmute yourself. Hello. Hi. Yes. Hello. Uh, hello. Where are you uh, from? I'm Brazilian. I'm, I'm Brazilian. Awesome. And what's your question? So I'm 17 and I'm starting university this year and I want to be a concept designer, but I don't know what to learn first, you know, what I need to do to become a concept designer. Anybody, yeah. any concept designers? What would you prefer to do more? Characters or environments or uh, all of it? Or environments. Environments. Uh, well, perhaps uh, tapping a little bit into uh, 3D, uh, uh, 3D uh, learning about lighting and composition. Uh, I would start there. Mm -hmm. okay. 3D just to help you uh, navigate with uh, perspective, because if I said learn perspective, that would be a lot harder. Um, and uh, certainly very, very helpful, but uh, it'll be, it'll just seem scarier to you. While uh, today with uh, even, you know, just SketchUp, um, you can quickly put together some volumes and uh, get your camera where you need it and uh, come up with uh, the right stuff. Um, but if we have to be very serious, then I, I would definitely advise you to learn more about the perspective and how things work 
um, because with environments, that would be crucial. You would have to communicate depth of the scene. You would have to communicate light from different sources. And uh, uh, so these are going to be the essential things in my opinion. Okay. And to say, you know, you're not 17, obviously, but you remember 17 a little bit more than the rest of us. What kind of uh, <laughs> advice might you give Angela here? Uh, I guess, uh, I think taking a lot of experience from your own life and applying it to your work does help. And uh, because doing so will attract a lot of other people since they can relate to whatever it is that you're doing with your concept art. Um, I guess if it's like a environment, if you're gonna make a, a bedroom, and then if you take, let's just say a friend's bedroom as an inspiration and put that in, then people will be like, oh, I recognize that because like I have a friend exactly like that. So I guess just really observing like your surroundings, your life, different places um, does help a lot. This is less of technical stuff, more like storytelling. It also separates uh, your art from everybody else's because now you're taking from your own life, right? Like mm -hmm. you're letting that influence, uh, especially Angela, you're from Brazil. If you want to branch out outside of your country as well to get jobs that are not local, perhaps, then all of a sudden branding becomes a thing, right? Maybe we could talk a little bit about, you know, creating that, I don't know if you want to say brand, but that identity, perhaps. Anybody want to talk about that a little bit? I, I'd say, um, you know, draw, draw those things that you want to draw and draw a lot of them. And then be you know and, and get the community know you know knowing that that's what you love to do, I think then you you attract um, folks to your passion and then they want you to you know they they want to encourage you and see you do more. But I think just that connecting to what you love to draw and drawing a lot of it. And uh, that's coming straight from you know one of the teachers of many of the successful artists in the industry now, like. <laughs> Fawn Verisan Thorne comes to mind at Disney. Uh, what does she do that was so special? What, what do you remember as a student? Absolutely. Um, uh, Fawn was always drawing, just, just constantly drawing and saying, look at my sketches, look at my sketches. And it was such a delight because you knew that when you saw her, she would come and bring another just amazing, you know, numerous sketchbook pages filled with this fun, just fun. And then also the little disasters, you know, like all the little disastrous drawings we all make. Um, and she'd be like, look at this horrible one. And I'm like, okay, but look at this one little lovely spot in it. And um, just, she was always drawing. And the other thing too, that I thought was, um, that I'd say is really good is that she always helped uh, the people around her. So um, she was always curious about what other people were drawing and she'd always find something positive in the mark making. Um, even if the person was, you know, just a, little tiny artling just starting off and she was a you know big famous senior she was still able and she still helped them um that's what i remember the most it was just always always a delight that's wonderful um when we go to one of the questions that have been typed to us this one's from angela angela says a different angela do you have suggestions during COVID-19 how to build an artist community? I'm in Brooklyn and all of my art friends left. Uh, I want to connect to new people in the entertainment art industry and I'm not sure where to go besides Instagram and LinkedIn. We definitely came to the right place today. Lightbox <laughs> Expo, right? There's tons of people. I think, I think I'm I think to say about that because I'm, I'm also near Brooklyn. Um, and I live in upper New Jersey, so I go to the city a lot. Um, I definitely feel you on the, the whole COVID struggle. It's been really hard for like a lot of artists, especially since like where we're, we tend to like be stuck at home drawing all day. So, you know, when you have like a global pandemic, you're like even more isolated than usual. 
Um, I've been talking to, I've been like doing what you did with like talking to people on Instagram, um, talking to people on Twitter. Uh, I feel like at this time, it's like, what's more important to me is just kind of like connecting with others, um, not really based on like, uh, not and not really having the, the goal of like, connecting for business, but just to like, kind of reach out to others on, you know, social media and like check in how they're doing. Um, and just to like, kind of become friends with people. Uh, and through that, I've been able to like gain new connections, if that makes sense. Yeah, anybody feel like uh, making friends as you get older gets harder? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess it comes with uh, how much bullshit can you tolerate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks like uh, somebody doesn't just fire their clients. <laughs> you, wanna, you wanna be my friend, Bobby? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I think. Discord is a great place to connect with people because you can actually talk to them, even though like sometimes when you're on Instagram and when you message people, it just it feels like there's an extra wall in between you. But even just talking through voice is it you just feel a bit more connected with people and then you can talk about certain things that you can't necessarily type. Um, like I met a lot of people through the schoolism Discord channel. And every week we meet up on Friday and everyone kind of just joins and pays. And then I, most of the times I don't talk, but just listening to people makes me feel like, you know, I'm like connected with others. So Discord's, you know, great. There's also other, a bunch of other channels that can join. Yeah, I've been loving the Discord channel for with Lightbox just because there's so many people all in there. Uh, you wake up at any moment, you could find somebody around. Uh, that's been really fun. Yeah. And Danielle, Danielle, you've been talking um, a, a lot about uh, mental health, things like that. Maybe you can kind of shed some light on uh, how to deal with things during the pandemic. What's been working for you? Um, <laughs> it's funny because I was the one who had like a burnout during the pandemic. And even though I talk about mental health, <laughs> I had like the biggest struggle. Um, Me too. Yeah, that's funny. So Brazilians having yeah. a breakdown. <laughs> uh -huh. um, but I feel like I, for me, like personally, I'm already like a very um, introverted um, person. So I'm always at home anyway. So it didn't really change so much for me, just like the weekends and stuff like that. And I feel like staying uh, home, like with every, not everybody, because it's just me and my partner. So, but like, I can't see anyone uh, and I'm not like very talkative. You can notice, <laughs> like the first time I'm speaking. <laughs> um, yeah, and like in on the weekends I go out and stuff, but I wasn't doing that, so I didn't really have a break from the place that I work, the uh, you know the place that I create anything, be it for work or for fun. Uh, so that you know, being there all the time, um, twenty four seven inside the place that you work on is tough because you feel like you don't have a rest. You feel like you are constantly on like the working mindset and it can't be that way because that is that's not healthy you need to just you know tune out um turn off all the working mindset and just relax and because uh actually uh, creativity happens when you you know are relaxed and that's when you have ideas that's when um the aha moment comes so you need the relaxation moment so um most of artists mo I, I don't know if most of them but you know a big part of 
the artists that I know, they work at home as well. Like even if they work at studios, they do have their like set up at home for like personal things. And being in that, in that same place, like all the time, it's really hard. So I had to, you know, breathe a lot and do a lot of self hypnosis to, you know, get through this because it was tough and I was like, almost giving up i was almost quitting drawing wow self-hypnosis you know i (laughs) I was thinking about that too i got (laughs) hypnotized in uh, college oh really yeah how's that like i'll tell you exactly how it's like um (laughs) this is a story i've I've never actually i don't think i've ever said this online because it's crazy so yeah, I'm definitely. in college and there's this uh, hypnotist that came in, um, Tony something, and he did this X-rated hypnotist show, right? So what does that mean? Whoa. Well, I guess you'll Whoa. find out. X-rated. So it was like, it wasn't X-rated, X-rated. It was just like, that was his gimmick kind of thing. That's what it said. And so we go. It sounds a lot worse. Yeah, sorry. I, yeah. <laughs> There's no crazy videos out there, or maybe there is. But, uh, I go there with my friends, and so that we're was you. <laughs> we're hanging out, and uh, now this, yeah. So we're hanging out. We're we're sitting in the back, and the the hypnosis guy, he's like, "All right, everybody. So we're gonna do an exercise to start things off. Everybody, put your hands together, and on the count of three, you're gonna." double the amount of strength you know that you're putting your hands together with okay and he does his thing one two three whatever three two one okay twice as hard okay and it says a bunch of other stuff okay three two one twice as hard again and then three two one twice as hard again okay it does this over and over now who cannot get their hands apart come up on stage i'll help you and that was my first mistake (laughs) so i couldn't get my hands apart (laughs) <laughs> and you know it's just me and my friend were like challenging each other okay do this you know let's try this and then i couldn't get my hands apart he couldn't either and we get up on stage and uh so i get up on stage with him and there's about 30 of us and he goes okay so i'm gonna help you get your hands apart and i'm like oh this isn't good and he goes, okay, close your eyes. And for some reason, oh his voice sounds like the voice of God. That's what it sounds, that's what it feels like. Oh my right? goodness. And there's these oh big lights on God. me, so I can't see the audience either. So the audience kind of disappears into fog. And so I have my eyes closed. And you know how you see static when you have your eyes closed, right? Yes, yes. The static starts to turn into a wave. And starts to go, you know, and then all of a sudden I'm gone. And then I wake up and there's only eight of us from 30 to like eight. And then he goes, um, he says something to me because we're both Chinese. I'm the only freaking Chinese guy up there. He's like, don't worry, I'll take care of you, my Asian brother. I'm like, oh, no, this is not good. He's targeted me. Um, Anyways. Yeah, hypnosis is like, I remember him telling me, uh, I have a Ferrari. I have this beautiful Ferrari. I'm I'm driving down the street. I put my hand out and all of a sudden a steering wheel materializes and I'm in a Ferrari, right? And, And the time where I really knew, okay, yeah, I'm hypnotized, was he was passing down the cigarette and he was saying, this is the most potent uh, joint in the world. Uh, everybody take a couple, a couple puffs and pass it. And I'm, I go to the person next to me. I'm like, that's not a joint. That's a cigarette. He's trying to trick us. And by the time it gets to me, it smells like, it smells like weed. And it did not smell like a cigarette at all. And I was like, wow, I am, I am completely hypnotized. Uh, but yeah, so what made it kind of x-rated and stuff like that was um he told me that i was in the sex olympics to represent canada as the top (laughs) male stripper in my country (laughs) and showed the audience why you're so skilled and i ran
and into the audience, and uh, the rest is history. So. No. <laughs> no oh yeah, but this is kind of cool. So in the end, he goes, um, "Everybody that's hypnotized, go back to your seats. The show, as far as you know, has not started." Right, and he closes the show. He goes, "Yeah, sorry, we can't do the show anymore because of this and this." Have a wonderful night. And he also says, like, you know, when you leave the place, uh, then you'll remember everything. So everybody's watching me as I'm leaving the place. And as I leave those doors, everything floods back to me. And, and I start looking around and everybody's staring at me. And oh, that was, my God. That was so embarrassing. But then I went back in and I told the guy, I was like, man, that was powerful stuff. I said, can you hypnotize me to work harder than I ever worked before in my life? And like to really, really, you know, go at 100%. And he's like, sure. And then he, he did that. And he said, also, every time that you drink out of a water fountain, it'll taste like your favorite alcoholic beverage. And it did. for a week, it did. It tasted like, I think it was rum and coke at that time, you know. Uh, so there's my super long story so that's pretty helpful actually. that's crazy <laughs> um, i don't I'm think you're gonna that. like what I, I don't think you'll like what i'm gonna say okay yeah <laughs> but, <laughs> hold on um uh, i'm not saying like that i do like the self-hypnosis because i have graduated in hypnotherapy so i'm a hypnotherapist as well as an artist and for uh, now <laughs> <laughs> so like People who work in the hypnotherapy, uh, they don't like, they don't endorse the hypnosis shows that goes on uh, everywhere. So um, that kind of example that you, you the story that you told us, um, you're not gonna like this, but <laughs> uh, the person who is hypnotized, uh, they are, because all hypnosis is self-hypnosis, so they are allowing themselves to yeah. uh, observe the suggestion. Um, that's the cool part, because um, it's not like the hypnotist did something to you, but you were open enough to <laughs> go with it. I and, see. Yeah. I see. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, I think I'm a uh, number one stripper in the world and I want to run into that crowd sometime. <laughs> <laughs> you know what though? Yeah, you're right. Like how it felt to me was that was the voice of God. And if God told me to like say kill oh my, my brother, I'm not going to do that. Right? But when he told me that... Um, believe in yourself you know you're the number one stripper in the world i did believe it have confidence yes mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's really it's really powerful because this yeah it's the subconscious mind um it's extremely powerful and that's really exactly the topic that i uh, approached on my panel on uh, friday and it's how to use your subconscious the power of your subconscious and uh, self-hypnosis in order to you know be a better artist and a healthier artist because you know we all go go through some mental stuff because of our art and oh, the amount of energy that we put into it so it can be used for you know anything but when you are you know when you have like a goal or a specific uh, thing that you want to achieve it's really really powerful that you, you know be aware so do you get into it do you like kind of uh work yourself up so that you're a superwoman and you can take on the world is that how you kind of use it or your self-hypnosis um, uh, no i use it for like little things like uh confidence and a uh, creativity and you know, public speaking, because that's tough. That's a huge, like, it's an awful thing for me to do. Um, flying, I kind of, I, I think I completely lost my fear of flying. I was terrified of flying, and uh, you know, I, I don't use it to, you know, feel that I'm better than <laughs> most people, but to improve the things that I feel like are you know, holding me back or 
yeah, stuff like that. Cool. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Alana, Alana asks, uh, hi, guys. I'm a freelance illustrator actively actively using schoolism and the visual arts passageway uh, online classes to improve my work. I've run into an issue with my finished pieces where I'm losing the loose and whimsical quality of my original thumbnails. Oh, we can all kind of relate to this, <laughs> right? And, uh, you know, how do you keep that pretty much, how do you keep the stiffness from taking over, keeping that looseness? I think a lot of turning on and off that original sketch, that really helps over top of your finished painting. Anybody else have anything to add? Incorporate the sketch into the actual painting sometimes helps. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah. I would actually have the sketch on the side. Like if it's digital, then uh, I would have the, the rough on the left and uh, the finished one on the right. And I just keep uh, going at it and constantly look to see what am I losing? Uh, am, am I still on track? and uh, just have that, you know, at all times. Fantastic. Yeah, I usually keep uh, the original sketch uh, beneath or uh, beneath all the layers so I can constantly check it to try to grasp for that original uh, spontaneous energy, you know, that, that burst of creativity that we have when we we, 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 we nail a sketch and uh, I always try to keep focused on what is it that made that sketch work and, and try to translate that into the, 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 the final work. But it's really a difficult thing to do. And uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't have any specific tips, but this is kind of, this is kind of it. I, I, I try to keep focus on the original sketch to, to, to Try to, I don't know. Try to, to to translate that that same energy to the to the finished artwork, and I uh, I not always manage to succeed, but uh, I try. Yeah, I've I've had a bunch of jobs where like um, where somebody supplies me with a sketch. You know, mm. and then I take that sketch and I take it to finish. Uh, usually that's like if Kay and I are working on a project and a lot of times she'll do the sketch and then I'll do the finish. Um, and, you know, her sketches are very specific. So I would need to click them on and off to make sure that it still gets the same amount of energy, the same amount of um, yes. that feeling, especially when you're working with somebody else. Uh, I had this one job a while back for this film, bunch of films that never came out. It was with uh, Buck Lewis, awesome, awesome character designer, you know, Over the Hedge and a bunch of other uh, films. And he gave me such loose looking stuff. Like this is just like chicken scratches on literally napkins that he scanned in or whatever. Uh, but still, you just click them on and off, make sure that's the same kind of feeling and he loved them, so um, it works. It works. It works, yes. Yeah, Danny, you you work uh, in big teams. Like, have you ever had to deal with other people's sketches? I think like you've told me a story about. Uh, I think it was was it Incredibles, and then seeing how Tony Facili took some little. You know, you know what I'm talking about? A picture yeah, of the family, yeah. something like that. Yeah, that was uh, that was Pete Sohn, Peter Sohn. And Tony Ficelli working on a family portrait of The Incredibles. It was just, yeah, it was like, yeah, just, just like, like you said, like chicken scratch from this amazing design, Tony Ficelli. And you're just like, whoa, that's awesome. You can see the characters, but then like, give it to someone like Pete Stone, who really understands, you know, form and, and three dimensions quality. Uh, he um, turned it into this beautiful family, this family portrait. It was just like, what, dude? Like, and yeah, loose drawings are awesome. And it's, it's really hard to keep that, um, energy 
Now, I'm sure you have to do that as well, like from time to time, working with so many artists. Do you have any tips on how you keep the kind of freshness and everything? One of, one of the things that, uh, that I've, I've done is, uh, is keeping that, that, that uh, what is it, that first initial sketch, if I do use it as an underdrawing, I keep the opacity on it, like almost where I can barely see it. That way I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like, uh, I'm not uh, like a slave to it. You know what I mean? And I'm not just kind of tightening up too much. I still keep a little bit of looseness to it. Um, but it's it's tough. It's like uh, that first initial sketch is always the one with most energy, I, I feel. Um, and I'm always trying to fight just to get that back into it. But yeah, I try not to look at it too much also. I mean, and then I, I had a friend too at Disney, Scott Watanabe, who said he would never draw over anything he would just look at it again it would keep it on the side if he was going to do a draw over and he wouldn't draw over it like specifically in, in, in on another layer or anything wow so that's a, another technique i guess how i wonder how that would even work you know what i mean because like you lose track you lose track of what that original sketch was absolutely uh, but yeah. some people don't really follow the rules i don't know that person <laughs> but i'll just say it <laughs> that's how i work like, like I actually have it on the on the left, and I draw on the right. That's oh, I, I thought you you meant like yeah, that's how I work. I don't follow rules. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's exactly what I meant. Um, uh, I actually uh, have the the sketch. I mean, I can start over it, you know, on a layer, but I don't try to see if I'm off or not, like because I know that. The finished piece will be different from the sketch. That's for sure. It's not going to look the same. However, what I'm looking at the original sketches is, is the energy, that, is the character, that, is the look in the eyes, that look in the eyes that I need. And yeah, it's going to look different. So if I try to make, you know, a a rendered sketch of something that worked in a 2D line, it's never going to work. It's a, a 2D line it has the job to express so many things, such as character, volume, shadow, all sorts of things. It's one line is carrying a lot of responsibility. Um, and when you start building something in 3D, there are no lines done. Like it's all now volumes, shadows, lights, all that kind of stuff. So you, you're working with, uh, with a different palette here altogether. So what I'm trying to do is understand that energy of the line work and translate it into a rendered piece, which is a totally different animal. So that was the logic. Awesome. Uh, why don't we go on to another question here? And uh, why don't we go to one of the people that had their hands up? Weena, Weena Lee, hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yes. Cool. <laughs> cool. Mm. Um, so um, I'm an industrial designer. So um, I basically like, you know, design um, footwear um, at Adidas before and so forth. Um, the thing is that like I'm I recently just found myself like really um, interested in this um, more artistic stuff. Um, that's why I, I kind of wanted to, you know, start the, the schoolism and I'm um, trying to transit myself into um, more like user interface artists or uh, maybe concept art. Um, the thing is that I, I, I do have um, all these um, basic drawing fundamentals, but they are all like really like, you know, um, physical products then. Um, yeah, so I'm just um, wondering, like, um, is there any, like, um, good advice for me, like, like, in the transitioning into from a product designer, like a physical um, product um, designer to, um, you know, concept art or UI artist, um, something like that. Um, yeah, so basically, that's kind of my question like wanted to get a foot in um in the industry it's like making that transition too because you're already doing something uh that can make it a lot harder since a lot of your time is being taken up anybody want to talk about transitioning uh, maybe that's that's like the core of this question i think 
Marie Alice. Oh my gosh. You know. Um, so maybe you could I'm tell your sure thing. You you already you already have a foot in the door. What you do you said you were working for industries, you were doing creative work, right? Oh sorry. I uh she doesn't have the mic anymore. Oh. And I lost her in a sea of people. Huh. Uh, well, about about transi transitioning in general, I guess is uh, you know, it's I think it's simple things, uh, just you know, connecting with people, showing your work wherever people are that you know work in the same field. So it can be social media, but it can also be uh, for me. It was going to um, book fairs and you know events like that. And it's just um, it's just like work in the end. Like you, you just have to be persistent and just um, you know just keep showing your your work and keep improving. And um, yeah, I, I, maybe I didn't listen properly to uh, her specific situation, but um, that's what comes to my mind so far. I don't know if anyone wants to uh, add to that. Well. Um... I know for me, like it was a while back, I used to, the last job that I had before starting the studio, it was a very tough transition. You know, I was, um, I was working full time and I was trying to take on as much freelance as I could with the hopes and dreams of doing it full time. I'm sure we can connect to some of that or uh, many of us can. I love this freaking snoring cat though. Oh my God. Or is it sobbing? Oh, it's sad. It's a sad cat. Uh, anyhow, where where is it? <laughs> it's beside the alligator. <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> Sobbing. <it. laughs> I think I have a bit to add to the whole transition thing. Yes, please. Um. So, uh, when I after I graduated high school, I actually didn't know anything about this whole industry. Um, I only found out about it um after someone in my first year of university telling me like this whole animation program. Um, so because I didn't know anything about it, I actually got a bunch of art books about animation and just recognizing what they, what people do in that specific um, field helped a lot because then it's like, okay, then I have to work on um, my anatomy or my character design if I wanna get into this type of industry. So just finding uh, resources would help with the transition. Yeah, definitely. And like something about that, I find that so many people like kind of afraid to do their own research, it seems. And there's so much out there, like obviously, you know, schoolism and classes and all that, but also, you know, books like just going to the library or blogs or podcasts. I mean, you can really just learn by, by with all the resources that's out there. And that's, you know, if you have, if you if you're comfortable structuring your time and your own work you know like that that's that's you know that's probably all you need really fantastic anybody else now um victor you were doing art for a while but you didn't transition to full-time artist until when well um to to be like artists artists like to just actually um, draw and uh, paint. Um, I've been an art director for a long time. Um, it's just how my my life kind of went. Uh, at some point, uh, yeah, I think uh, just a few years ago, like, I don't know, like three years, four years ago. Yeah, four freaking years ago? That's insane. Like, you became a... No, but I've been, I've been uh, you know, uh, leading teams uh, when I was 20, I don't know, four, five. I had a team of 200 people um, that uh, I led 200 artists. Uh, and uh, we... Okay, bad example then. Um, you know, yeah, we're so... talking about transitioning. Uh, I thought you were doing something completely different for a while, like uh, At the you're time running when we a spoke company. With you, um, I was a creative yeah. director for a fitness company. So um, uh, you can tell, right? Um, and uh, it's uh, it was more about product design um, and uh, UX and UI. Um, so 
I can't really say about transition. I, I can't really. That's okay. I, I could actually add something I, here. Um, yeah. Like when, uh, when I was before the studio, before we started the studio, like I was saying, I was, I was working a full-time job and I was trying to pick up as much freelance as possible. And those of you that have gone down that road, it's full of uh, jobs where it's like, you're getting paid minimal, minimal, like a fraction of uh, minimal wage because you're not as good at that moment and you're getting bad jobs. Uh, so I still needed that full-time job. Kept saving up, kept saving up until the point where I felt like I could quit that job. But at that moment, man, that was a tough, tough moment because I was sleeping like maybe four hours a day. Uh, it was very, very difficult. It got to a point where I was freelancing eight hours at night and then working eight hours a day and then commuting and cooking. You know, you're sleeping like hardly ever. Um, but it made the transition way easier because I realized I was building a little bridge to my new life as opposed to just kind of jumping from one island to the other, swimming through shark infested waters. You know, um, when you don't kind of try to make that transition at, um, as abruptly, you know, if you just kind of quit and then you try to start your new life, it's way harder. It's way harder. It's better, I think, to just really put in the hard work and suffer a little because you'll suffer a lot less later on um, but watch your health watch your mental health your physical health and all that know your limits uh, we're pretty much towards the end of uh, today's session here but I would love to end it off with oh. some advice for everybody uh, any bits of advice that you would love to have had when you were starting off or before you had it. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna call on some people because you guys are all too modest. Let's go with Charlotte, <laughs> the educator. Piece of advice. Um, I, uh, I would say I wish that um, just because someone doesn't like a particular type of art that I wouldn't listen to heavily, like it, they would give some advice or whatnot, which is great. And you can listen, you can take this, the structural information or the little bit of technical, um, but if they don't like animals, then we're not gonna connect as artists, but I can still learn something from them. And I felt probably when I first started out, I was a little too resistant. Oh, they don't, they don't like animals, so I'm not gonna pay attention, but we, I, as a young, as an artling, I should have, I should have listened more to all of the advice um, that I was given, be a little bit more open to it. Excellent. Anybody else with uh, some last bits of advice? Oh shoot! You know what? I before we get to that, I want to get to Carla. Carla, I mentioned that your name, Cersei. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> How did you end up with that name? Because I know it's not your last name, right? It's your middle name. Uh, it's my middle name. Um, my dad asked, uh, like, uh, I asked my dad why he gave me that name, and he was just like, I, I thought it was cool. I read about it somewhere, and I was like, Game <laughs> of Thrones? No. <laughs> turns out when I did some research, it turns out that Cersei is like this Greek. Um, uh, I don't know if he was a goddess or, or like a. a like this, the daughter of one of the gods or in a nymph. I don't know if that's a goddess, but she turned Odysseus's men into pigs. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> now, I know like uh, a lot of a lot of people in the Philippines, they have weird nicknames that don't really make sense to their real names. Do you have yeah. a nickname you or or um, Tristan? I don't know if Tristan's still there. I think he dropped off because his internet was a little shaky. Mm -hmm. We all have all like pet names that our grand our grandparents give us, but uh, mine is pretty decent. Uh, it's pretty cute. At least it's not some weird name like 
Yeah, there's a lot of yeah, <laughs> baby, um, tita Boy. tits. <laughs> I knew a tita tits. You know that was kind of odd, but I have an uncle. His his name is uh, his nickname is Bobo, and it literally translates to stupid. So, oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, any last bits of advice that anybody can add or wants to add? One one sentence that I like to remember when I struggle with things is that the best way out is always through. It means that you like it's it's hard to start, but once you're started, you're like that's the only way to go. You just have to go through it, and that's, that's something that you know I, I I remember when I I usually struggle with stuff. That's fantastic. Let's give everybody um, a nice close up of the board here. Starting off from Jim with the Rook. Love that. Hilarious. <laughs> and Danielle. Oh my gosh. That's so cute. It's adorable. <laughs> Marie Alice, talk about transitioning and like taking things head on. You don't really paint digitally usually, right? Uh, well, I started last week, and um, <laughs> that's amazing. And I think today might be my last day because it's just so hard. <laughs> well, you did it. You did it, and you did it amongst uh, people that are nonstop digital. So yeah, I'm, I'm trying to pretend that it's okay. I'm here. So talk about you know um, dealing with stress and things like that. I'm sure, like many of you must have been like uh i don't know if i want to paint and draw with these these awesome people even though they probably don't want to paint and draw with you because you're awesome <laughs> any nerves uh that happened before this thing because it definitely looks like everybody's very comfortable uh filling up this board but beforehand was there any like nerves that people had to kick? I'm afraid I, I was afraid I wasn't gonna wake up. <laughs> oh, you weren't gonna wake up? What, is that what yeah, you mean? Uh, <laughs> I was afraid <laughs> I was gonna miss it. <laughs> I was like, I was late and I was like, oh no, um, I'm not sure if I wanna enter, 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 enter or anything. And I was like, I, and then I felt like, oh no, should I even do this? I'm, I'm bad at like impromptu stuff. And like, and I had like a blank going in just I'm not sure I'm not very good at like I don't know I mean, I'm just really shy sometimes so I'm just not sure like, you know I'm, I, I definitely have nerves so I'm definitely not very articulate right now <laughs> well Genevieve you took those nerves and you punched them in the face and you told them listen <laughs> shut up nerves I'm going on here we're gonna yeah. entertain people we're gonna do some awesome work and uh, inspire <laughs> so thank you so much and thank you to all of the panelists uh, that have shown up and all the attendees but especially huge huge applause to all the panelists look at you guys you made a giant awesome board of very creative chess pieces and just characters and all sorts of cool stuff in general so i want to thank you guys for making uh lightbox uh very very special uh events for all of us thank you guys so much thank you, so much, thank, you Bobby. thank you man for thank making you. this happen <laughs>